Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Hey, hey, welcome to your day off. My name is Corey. Of course, I'm sitting with my best friend, Tony. What's up, buddy? What's up, brother? Nothing. I want to thank Tyler and uh, what's the part? Mike. Ma- Mike. I want to say Mark. I want to thank Tyler and Mike for in- bringing us out to the Salt Lake City Beauty and Barber Expo. Um, if you haven't been to Salt Lake City, uh, you must come to Salt Lake City. Man, we got here a few days early, and you're talking about some spectacular sights. Dude, oh. I, 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 I kid often that I understand why the Mormons just stop because this is like the most beautiful place I think I've ever been to. Oh, my God. Dude, it, I mean, yeah, you can't, you can't talk about it. You can't show pictures. I mean, you have to experience in order to really receive it. I know. It's so weird. Like, I take all these pictures and go, they're beautiful, but you're like, but it's like speaking a different language. <laughs> you yeah, know I'm I mean? looking at it. I take a picture. And I look at the picture. I'm like, that's not the same thing. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's crazy. It, it's just it, it's so magical, really. You know, and Big Sky. How do you explain Big Sky without us seeing it? Yeah. You're like the sky is big. You're like, of course the sky is big. You're like, no, but you don't understand. <laughs> it's like big. Yeah, I mean, you can see forever. You know, forever and ever, right? Yeah, that's cool. Anyways, I'm excited about this show. So uh, this is our first podcast that we're doing at the show. Um, listen, if you don't follow Tyler Kelbert, you must follow Tyler Kelbert. He is like. He's a special, special person in this industry, and he's put together the Salt Lake City. I think it's Beauty and Barber, Barber and Beauty. I'm not sure which way it is, but um, Beauty Barber. So it's Beauty Barber uh, Expo. So, dude, it's just, I'm just really proud of Tyler. Like, I think everybody kind of feels paternal or maternal to Tyler. Yeah. Right? Like, like, like you kind of want to, like, hug him up and all that kind of stuff, right? So, um, so anyways, yeah, so definitely give Tyler Kelbert a follow. Um, he is just a gift to the industry and just the sweetest, nicest guy in the world. Oh, you, you know, exactly what I was going to say. So sweet. Sweet, right? It's so funny. Like, when we did the podcast with him, I go, hey, Tyler, send me some pictures. And he sent me all these, like, mad dog pictures, like, <laughs> making the face. And I'm like, Tyler, you've got the smile that lights up the earth. Like, that's yeah. the picture I want. You know, I don't want that old mad dog barber <laughs> picture, man. Show me, like, the, show me the smiles that, that, that's changing the world, you know? Exactly. And, you know... He came to Presley Poe and Friends and uh, hung out support, and he just he won a, uh, a one shot award, right? Yep. He's uh, he's killing it. He's such a talented, talented hairdresser, such a sweet, sweet guy, and uh, he's putting on a, a great show here in Utah, in Salt Lake City. I think. Did we talk? I think it might. Is it the only show in like the Mountain Standard Time? Maybe there's something going on in Phoenix or something, but I don't know of any in this time zone. Yeah. You know, I think that that's. I mean, Vegas, but Vegas technically is. Pacific time. Right. Right. Yeah. So, I don't know. Anyway, so our guest today is the one, the only, the amazing Vanessa Branda. <laughs> not Brenda. Not Brenda. <laughs> Vanessa Branda. <laughs> Got it. Um, and uh, so... I, I think. Why you sweating? Uh, yeah, I, I was <laughs> definitely sweating. I was sweating because of you. <laughs> because of you. So um, the first time that Vanessa, she's actually been on the podcast before. I don't know if she spoke, but she's actually been on the podcast um, when when, when uh, we did our podcast with our dear friend Curtis. Rest in peace, Curtis. Uh, Vanessa sat in with us, and um, I think it's kind of the first time that we kind of broke bread, or you know, kind of got to know each other, shared a hug, or whatever, you know, a, a, a back a, a back rub or whatever it was. But um, so that was first time, and, and Vanessa's actually never spoke on it and um, much like Curtis and I mean this with all esteem that uh, Vanessa is definitely um, one of the people that when we go to a hair show that we reach out to that that we say hello to oh look and there's Tyler walking by so um, uh, she's um, she's like our new Curtis man you know she's like a behind the stage behind the curtain behind the stage kind of person that just knows how to get shit done so um, so uh, anyway yeah, I think there was some scientific scientific fact that just came out to show why she does and how she can do what she does <laughs> why know? is that the multitasking yeah, that, yeah you know at women's brains uh, <laughs> we were just talking off off mic that they can process and, and handle a lot more than, <laughs> than what our, our male brains can handle 
<laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Hey, listen, anyone that's married knows that because uh, there's just the. Uh, there, there, there's well. I mean, I'm going to ask her about that anyway. Okay, we're going to get into that, but you know, uh, I think our, 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 we have zero success without without our taskmaster Katie May, who uh, who's our behind the scenes girl, and she gets a, uh, you know, she gets us uh, moving straight. I know. I, I watch what she does, and I'm tired. <laughs> so I just watch. <laughs> just watching. Yeah, it's crazy. Should we get in? Let's do it. Vanessa, man. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm not going to even try her title, but uh, she's with Victory Brand. She's going to tell us all about that, but uh, we'll get that. Uh, but Vanessa, welcome to the podcast. Hi. Thanks for having me. Dude, I'm so excited to have you. I am too. You know? Yeah. I, we're just like, uh, we've been trying to get you on, and then, and then we had that little weird thing, and then I didn't know what the right timing was. Like, I don't want you to think it's charity because it's not, mm-hmm. you know, and all that stuff. So anyways, we're over that. Dude, welcome. I'm so excited to be here. So, um, how long have you been with uh, uh, Victory Brands? In January, six years. Six years? Six years. Let me so guess, you were- 100 shows. Close to About, it. yeah, close to 100 shows. Dude, so you're like, like, we go to like a lot of shows, but we don't do 100. We've done a lot. We That's- had the, you know, the two-year kind of break with COVID and the pandemic, but we've been road warriors the whole time. Oh, really? That's a, almost 100 shows in, in four years. Yeah. Well, I think BTC is doing 100 shows now. <laughs> a lot. I think tours seven or eight shows this year. Seven besides, eight? besides Big Show. So they're doing. You're doing eight titles with them. Yeah. Wow. Where? For, where are you from? Originally, I'm from the East Coast, but I've been in California since I was a teenager. So there, most of my life now. Where in the East Coast? Um, Philadelphia. Oh hey. no! Are you serious? Where I get, that's where I get the grit. <laughs> I got the East Coast vibes from that. Yeah. The grit. Yeah. Don't you have a product called the grit? Or we something? do. <laughs> 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 Ding. Maddie Conrad. Yeah. Ding. <laughs> I, didn't I, even I, mean I was wondering why all these other barbers were kind of busted up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious! Yeah. Where did you? Um, so did you and Maddie just meet on the road? No, um, I went to one of Maddie's classes, um, and I think it was in Oakland, San Francisco. Um, before I worked for him, I worked for a franchise of men's barber shops, um, and I was opening a store in San Francisco. And they were very strict on education uh, because I'm crew trained, so. We couldn't take a lot of outside education, and I saw that he was going to be there, and so I went to his class in secret. Like, I didn't tell anyone I was going. Yeah. Oh, totally. I was like, nobody nobody noticed me. So I watched his class, and um, I wasn't the director of education, but I was the highest educator for that company, and I was so impressed by what he was teaching. And the product line wasn't out yet, and he was talking about it. Um, and at the end of class, I like marched right up to him and I was like, thank you so much. That was the best class I've ever taken. I shook his hand and I gave him my card and I was like, when you're ready, hire me. I want to work for you. And then we became Instagram friends and I kind of softly, um, consulted for him for about a year. So we were kind of talking about stuff as the products were getting ready to launch. Um, and then the first year they did shows, he asked me if I wanted to come for a tryout at ISSE and I tried out and he hired me two weeks later and. The rest is history. Six years. <laughs> wow. So, so well, yeah. did the tryout consist of you cutting hair? Or what no, was um, I was like helping manage his booth. So it was their first big trade show as a brand. Um, and I didn't know what I was doing either, but um, I didn't expect to be paid or anything. I was like, absolutely, I'll be there. So I took the weekend off work in secret again because I was still with the other company mm-hmm, sneaking in. Mm-hmm. And I got there and um, I was opening barbershops at the time so I have a very I can understand the way that things need to flow and go so I just kind of took charge right away I'm like okay we should do this this way why don't we do this and then by the end of setup day I was like running everything because I think he it was his first show and he was thinking about the education and I just took care of all of it all the models um, scheduling like everything and then I got hired right after like I got a contract and Wow. Did you feel, did you, is it your personality to take over or, did, or did, were you just like, no, this needs to get done? It needed to get done and I'm a take charge person, so I might not know how to do something, but I'm going to figure out how to do it. Um, and I was needed in that moment. I don't know if they even knew they needed me, but I was right. like, oh, this is kind of like opening a store. You know, we got to count everything. We got to do this. And I just kind of took charge and. By the end of that weekend, they knew that they couldn't let you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't there like a saying about that, like, you know, make it so they can't fire you or make it, you know, be so good that they can't? Well, I got my own hotel room, you know, and um, 
finished everything up and I was like, okay, like, I think you guys are good to go. Like, thank you so much. And he paid me and I wasn't expecting to be paid. You know, I didn't even want anything. I was just grateful to be there. Um, And he paid me and I was like, well, I got paid. And he's like, okay, we'll talk when I get home. And then we started talking immediately about what a full-time position would look like because I was with a company, you know, benefits and it was a very corporate type of job. And so I wanted to make sure that what I was doing was going to be the right decision all around, you know, Mm. money-wise, health-wise, inspiration-wise, and things like that. But I think it was the perfect time. We we met at the perfect time. It always seems to work out that way, right? Yeah, I think so. Make the time, I need the time. So are you you a hairstylist? I'm a hairstylist and a barber. I'm dual licensed. Really? Yeah, but I haven't been behind the chair now in seven years. Mm Because I was full-time teaching um, with my last position. So I was teaching for, I think, two and a half, almost three years. And then I started with Maddie. We talked about me doing stage, but I don't really have an interest in that. It's not your thing. No, I like to to be the business mind and kind of behind the scenes. Do you still keep your skills up? Do you still... I mean, I'll cut my boyfriend's hair or like my dad on occasion, but not really. I mean... I've been so focused on the business aspect of everything. I mean, I love our education. You know, I'm really tuned in with what they're doing and how they're teaching and things like that, but I haven't cut in a long time. Tony, Tony, you need a haircut. I do need a haircut. I'll fade you up. There you go. (laughs) There you you. go. All right. (laughs) You heard it. I heard it. You heard it after the podcast. (laughs) Let's go. (laughs) So did you you, uh, you have your barber license or your cos license? I was a cosmo. Yeah. Yeah. So I was a cosmetologist. And I moved to Orange County, California, uh-huh. and I assisted for like a year. I was feeling out where I was, and booth rent is really expensive in Orange County, California. Then I went out on my own, and I just didn't enjoy doing women's hair. I didn't want to sit with them for three hours. I didn't want to have those type of female discussions, you know, about like the Kardashians and stuff like that. It was very unappealing to me, and I was like, I don't like doing hair. And then I'm like, wait, you know... I do like doing hair, but this isn't it for me. And I got recruited. So I think my last company just went through a database or something because I got a letter asking if I wanted to come and try out for a position. So I looked into it and I saw that they had like 50 salons, barbershops open at the time. So I went to a tryout and I did a skin fade and they hired me immediately. Um, And so I was like, okay, I'm going to try this out. And I left, I like gave my female clientele to another girl, which I didn't have a ton. I'd only been doing hair there for like a year. Um, And I went full into barbering. And then um, that company put me through barbering school um, when I went on their education team. Wow, that's cool. That's very cool, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I had so many opportunities from that company and I learned a lot. So very grateful for that. What was your big learn there? I mean, not just like hairdressing, but like, or or barbering. My confidence. Um, Mm. because so I got hired as a stylist um, and the first day of training at this store it was one of the first big uh, I guess flagship stores or something so their entire training team came in and I was sitting in the waiting room and I watched them like walk across the parking lot and they're like wearing all black they looked like the witches of Eastwick they just looked (laughs) so cool and they came in but the training was so structured. So it's American crew training. And then I actually had to go out and test in Colorado too. But I loved the way that they were training. And the first day, like my first hour, I thought I want to be on that education team because they were talking about it. They were opening, I think by the time I left, they had opened 110 stores or something like that. And I opened 36 of them. So I was like, I wanted to travel. I wanted to teach. I didn't want to be behind the chair. Um, but so I worked at that salon for almost two years. They made me the manager like immediately. And then I started training the internal staff. Um, and I had to test to do all that cause it's American crew training. So it's like super strict. There was no guards. There was no trimmers, edgers, no thinning shears, very structured training. And I took to it really quickly. Um, even in training and I was nervous, you know, but I picked it up really quickly. So I started training the, um, the staff and corporate was always looking at our numbers right retail numbers clients and things like that and it was one of those companies where there's like a base level stylist like a senior stylist and then a master stylist but it was all based on numbers you know how many clients you had what retail you were doing and I made it to master stylist in nine months and that was like unheard of so I was fully booked five days a week 
I was charging $55 for a haircut, like the, the most expensive, and I had a waiting list. So I was really busy, and they were kind of watching my numbers, and they had invited me to the corporate office for a couple of trainings and stuff, and then I was going to quit. I was going to take my clientele and leave because um, I just wasn't really vibing with the way the salon was at that time so I was gonna I quit on a Friday and corporate I quit at like four o'clock in the afternoon corporate called me by 6 30 and got me on a meeting and they were like we want to hire you we want to put you on the steel team and I was like done they're like okay you start Monday and so I just started immediately and then like two weeks after I went through training I was opening their Wall Street store in New York City <laughs> it, was, it was like really fast wow. so obviously they knew that they didn't want to lose you how valuable yes. you were the first weekend you get to work with Maddie, he knew how <laughs> valuable. <laughs> Make yourself so good they can't ignore you. That's it. You know? <laughs> Not to do, well, yeah, yeah, you, yeah you've you been living that. I'm just a hard worker, you know, and yeah. I just think I have a knack for what people need. Um, I'm really good at just picking up what's needed in the moment. Like, me, even with Tyler, last night I'm like, do you want me to come down there and help out? Because that's just the way I am. Yeah. It works. Everyone needs a Vanessa in their life. Hey. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Vanessa for hire. I like so we got a business here. Oh, no, no. Well, Matt is going to kill us now. Right. <laughs> you can email me at. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> <Maddie Conrad. laughs> yeah. I'm just Hey, uh, kind of on that note, though, why, because why, you were with Maddie at the time, why did you sit in with Curtis? So Curtis and I um, had a very similar position. Um, so... Uh, he was the education director, but very much like me, he takes care of Robin Lee. Um, and our companies are competitors, you know, like really competitors. And we probably shouldn't have been friends, but him and I helped each other a lot. Like, you need a model, I've got you. We need a model, I got you. Um, he would just do things like bring me a sandwich, just un not asked for anything and we really bonded and Curtis and I used to speak every week so mm. every Thursday morning he would call me and we would talk about you know where everybody's going and what's going on and what's needed and we kind of coached each other because I don't think anybody can be really trained for this type of position or lifestyle and we kind of just helped each other through it and Wow. He's very special to me. Well, I lived on the East Coast, and he lived on the East Coast, yeah. and that dude would call me at 4 in the morning. Oh, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> what time was it when he was calling you? But you always picked up. I mean, he, I was in California, so he'd wait till like, 8 a.m., but every Thursday morning, we would have coffee and talk. Yeah, That's what a beautiful song. Yeah. yeah. He, I miss him so much. Yeah, 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 same. Yeah. You know, like, he's like, I mean, we talked about it before, like, I always seeked out Curtis. Like, I yeah. got to see Curtis. When I, and, and, and I still, every time I get... Every time we do an event like this, I kind of like, I take a pause and just go like, Same. it's both, it's both like Curtis isn't here and Curtis is here. You know, it's kind of like, it's just like pause just to go like, I know? feel like he's with us, you know, yeah. he might not be here in the physical body, but he loved this so much. He so lived much. For this. He, he lived, lived for this. this. He yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 yeah. Anyways, I don't. We've gone down the Curtis road yeah. a couple <laughs> times on the podcast, Can and we then we not get all cry emotional. This morning? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyways, that, it's very cool. We we, yeah. we we all miss him and, and all that stuff. So, uh, you guys do a lot of shows. We do. A lot. Nonstop. Yeah. <laughs> And, like, I, I, I often think, whenever there's a big show, I often think of Maddie because he lives in Vancouver and just, like, I can't think of, like, a further place to kind of, like, come from. Yeah, and getting him around from there is not easy either. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he always has to change planes, like, three times before he gets somewhere, but I give it to him. You know, uh, last year, we did, he did close to, I think, 50 or 60 education classes outside of shows. So he was on a plane more than 100 times last year, and this year we're like, we can't do that. He's, he's got three businesses at home. We're doing all these shows, so we kind of pulled back on personal education this year, but he travels a lot more than I do. Do you help him, do you help him not only with the, um, with the product line, but the barbershops as well? Um, I don't help with the barbershops, but I do work closely with um, our manager at Gastown because mm -hmm. um, he does a lot of our shipping for our Canadian um, customers. So him and I work really closely together, and him and I have talked about you know staffing issues and stuff, but no, I'm separate from his shops. Got it. Do you, is, is Victory, 
Is it a Canadian company? No, we're a U.S. LLC. Oh, nice. U.S. LLC. Have you guys ever thought about, and again, I think about this a lot, have you guys thought about um, getting into any of the distributors and stuff? Because you're self-distributed, essentially, right? We do all our own distribution, and we have from day one. So I don't think it's that we're against it, but those type of relationships would have to make sense, right? Um, also, you have to look at it from a manufacturing perspective. Um, standpoint because to work with a distributor, let's say Salon Centric or Cosmo Prof, I have to produce hundreds of thousands of units for them because they have so many stores, right? right? So initially, we were too small. I mean, now we're manufacturing, we definitely could, but we've been doing such a good job ourselves, we're not sure if we want to do that. Um, but if we do, it will be in Europe because we will need distribution in Europe. So that would probably be the first distributor that we work with. That makes sense, too. Yeah. Do you guys go to Europe now and, and do education? Um, we've been to London twice, and Maddie's gone out there for classes. So we've done a couple shows out there. I think we've done three shows out there. Barber Connect and then BTC had a tour date out there once. Um, they love him out there, and they really like the product. And we were um, set to launch their hoping by the end of 2020. So 2019, we spent the entire year, I had to get all of the products um, registered in the EU, so they have to go through all the chemical testing and stuff. Um, we had a distributor lined up and then COVID hit, and that really kind of changed everything. But I think we're looking at that really in the near future because we're ready for that now. So that's awesome. I think it'll be great for us. Yeah. By the way, there's no way you're going to keep Maddie off of a plane if you got Europe, <laughs> European distribution. European tour. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I totally. I mean, well, the beauty of a distributor is they take care of everything. So, oh. you know, like they basically buy the product and then they do the marketing and they sell it. We just have to get it to them. So that would really make sense for a place like Europe where we're not based. So we're not based. We don't speak the language in a lot of places like Germany is the main hub of getting things around Europe. Um, so for us to break into that market, we would definitely need to work with somebody because it's all new to us. We don't, you know, we don't have any experience. Would, in would that. you have to grow, like would Maddie go there and create a, a, a team of educators so they can? Probably, yeah. We would probably create a team. Um, but we would likely take a lot of the people that work with us already. So we kind of have a small team. You know, we've got Mari DeMonte and Maddie, and uh, our unit works really well together. So I think we would probably start with um, our Americans and Canadians, and then we would look to hire out there. But, yeah, definitely, we would do a full tour. and every When that's ready to go, we'll be there for a minute. So that's awesome. It'll be fun. A lot of planning involved in that. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine. Yeah. That sounds like a nightmare to me, actually. <laughs> We're just going to try and not kill me by the end of the year. So. <laughs> kill each other. <laughs> we get along really well. You know, really? like, there's only been a couple of instances in all these years where we just didn't get along on something. But I'd say we've only had one blowout in six years, which is not bad. Yeah, by the end of the year, now it's going to be a Vanessa for sale. <laughs> 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 hey, no, hey. I'm just you know. <laughs> <laughs> Vanessa. Anywhere you email, <laughs> I'm going to be on the other side of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, oh. that's so cool. Do you um do you miss Philly? No, I like California. I like my 65 degree weather all year, and uh, you're you still know. in Orange County. I'm in LA now, so I moved up to LA almost a year ago. Um, I'm really liking it so far. I thought people were moving out of L.A., not to L.A. I mean, if they go, they go, but <laughs> I love it. I mean, a lot of opportunity, and um, I've made a lot of good connections up there. It's, nice. it's been fun. Yeah, it's different. I work from home, you know, when we're not traveling, and so after COVID, I kind of felt, like, confined and bored, and I wanted a change, um, I felt like I was grounded for a couple years or something. You know, we didn't go anywhere. I didn't see my team for a year and a half. We didn't see each other physically for a long time. And I, I needed some sort of change. And 
I was like, I think I'm going to move to LA. And my parents are like, you're crazy. What are you doing? And I started looking up there and found this ridiculous loft with like 16 foot ceilings. And I'm like, I'm going to apply for it. And if I get it, I'm moving. And I got approved for it and I moved. And it's probably <laughs> one of the best decisions I've made in a long time. I'm really enjoying it up there. Wow. Well, next time we're in LA, we got a place we can crash now. Definitely. Right. Come to my loft. <laughs> we come, come, come to our 16 foot ceilings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do, you have like a, do you have like a six level like bunk bed that we can no, like jump into? No, it's right. just like tall cement ceilings and I've got really big windows, but it's the view that did it for me. So I look at the Hollywood sign and no, Griffith Park. Really? Yeah, that's my view. Like I can see it from my bedroom and my my living room. So like I wake up in the morning and I'm like, ah, and like there's the Hollywood sign. <laughs> it's just kind of neat, is it, you know. Is it there a bobcat in, or a he mountain lion? He just passed away. No, he yeah, died. He, away. Uh, he died. Yeah. PS forty two. Yeah. 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 I've been obsessed he with him. He was like for a local years. celebrity. Like, right. Yeah. He was a big. Uh, he was a big cat. So he he ate well. Mm, oh yeah, he was fed. <laughs> Yeah. Lots of little dogs in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> a lot, That's a bad a joke. Lot, I'm sorry. Uh, I just, yeah. You mean a lot less uh, little dogs in L.A.? Yeah. <laughs> now. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, well, not now. Now they're probably, you know, now the little dogs are making resurgence. Nature they? is replenishing right. itself. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> well, for, for sure, sure with you and Maddie being uh, vegetarians or vegans. <laughs> yeah, he's a vegetarian. Has he always been a vegetarian? No, no. He stopped doing chicken and beef i think three or four years ago um yeah he eats fish still but he's just on that trip Same. healthy trip Same. wanting to you know be healthy and he started running and you know doing a lot of that physical when stuff. are you gonna run <laughs> i see the him and mari run uh, running I'll be running to vacation i'm not running anywhere. <laughs> i'm not a runner if, if you were like if you're working here's how i imagine it like you're working at home and you get really bored and then you're like maddie we need to do something maddie's like i've traveled 100 days this year right no, I get my steps in with him because we walk everywhere. And also, you know, at these shows, by the time I get home, I've ran like 10 miles. I don't, I'm not a runner. I have no interest in that. I told him, I'm like, I'll come to the next marathon, but I'll be like with water and snacks and like cheering you guys <laughs> on. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> we're, we're actually talking about doing, um, our friend Ben Mollen is doing the 250. Yeah. I always want to call it Cocomelon, but that's yeah. just because I'm a grandfather. <laughs> yeah. There's this race in Arizona. It's a 250 mile. Do you know Ben? No. Ben Mollen? He oh, I do. Sheer, sheer Madness. Yeah. So he just signed sheer up for genius. a 200. Sheer Genius, right. Sheer Madness is the other thing. Sheer Genius. But he just signed up for a 250 mile run. Um, he's doing it for suicide prevention. Oh, um, I love that. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, I think the kids would be really into that. Send me the info on that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. He, um, 250 miles. Miles. And it's desert miles. It's not like it's not like uh, like land miles. No, you know. Yeah. So uh, it's gonna look like Forrest Gump by the end of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll try to put. Let's push Maddie toward that. Yeah. He actually like, looks like that. Now that yeah. I'm thinking about it, that's his Halloween costume yeah, this year. Forrest Gump. Forrest. Yeah. yeah. I like it. I'm I'm gonna go home now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's really cool, though. Um, mental health awareness and. It seems that a lot of barbers are into the running thing. I mean, a lot of our friends are into that. I think that's so cool. I, I know Nicholas does. And Nicholas doesn't look like a runner. Oh, man. Nikki's, that's a big fella. Nikki's buff. Yeah. Yeah. And he's doing like 50s. Yeah. He, do a 50, he said 50, right? Yeah, this 50. Morning? Yeah. That's crazy. Well, they're crazy. These, these kids run before a show. Like, last show, Mari got up at 5.30, and she ran like five miles and then came and taught on well, stage. Your show I'm like, are you a psycho? <laughs> like, she's like a marathon training. Okay. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Get I don't it. have a discipline. I don't, I don't get it at all. So, for someone that like has seen like hundreds of shows, like, what's going on with them? And I'm not looking for like dirt or anything like that. But I'm looking for like, in the last six or seven years that you've been with Maddie, how have the shows changed? What do you see that's working? What do you see that's not working? What do you what do you, what do you think is trending as far as shows and as far as uh, where brands are going to be set up with those? Well, I started with him in 2018. And shows were popping then. So pre-pandemic, they were busy. The show floors were packed. Um, tons of education. Tons of shopping. Um, and then I really think after the pandemic, things changed because a lot of people got a ton of education online at the time. Um, so they were all learning at home. I mean, we put out so much material. Um, everybody was kind of launching courses when we were idle for that long time because, you know, hairdressers, we were one of the last people to get to go back to work. So I kind of think there's a couple factors that have changed things post-COVID. So the first year after pandemic, 
it was busy again. And I think everybody just wanted that togetherness um, mm-hmm. and to come back together as a hair community. So that first year, things were busy. Um, but since then, it definitely seems that attendance is uh, lower than normal at the large shows. You're not seeing as many brands as you used to there. But I think there's a lot of uh, factors in that. Um, I think people might be a little bit over hair shows or they're looking for something different at hair shows. Like we were talking about the behind the chair show and that one always seems to be really good. And they have all of these events connected to it, you know, the awards and, you know, they have theme parties and things like that. And people are really jazzed about that. Um, I think the economy has affected show attendance and shopping because everything is so much more expensive. So um, people are had to try to rebuild their clientele as well after mm-hmm. COVID because, you know, a lot of guys started cutting their own hair or not cutting their hair. And it was kind of people that had, had careers and longevity had to start over a bit. So I definitely think that has affected attendance in shows. Um, but I personally think people are looking for something different. Um, I don't know what that is, whether it's education or less, you know, showy stuff on stage because there's kind of there's two types of education right there's the type that we do which is very structured cutting training Mm -hmm. styling training but then there's like the flashy education uh, where there's models and lights and choreography and I'm seeing a lot of that big stuff at the shows and I don't know if people are really into that anymore that was huge in the 90s I mean hair shows were like like rock star events and you know big lights and everything but I think people are looking for something different and I'm not sure what that is so that's what that's a conversation we have as a brand you know looking forward to the next year is this something that we want to continue do we want to take a year off and try something else um but it does seem different than it used to be yeah we felt the same thing we felt that how it has evolved into something a little bit more uh intimate like yeah. you know the, the 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 training yes versus the show yeah you know and, mm-hmm. and we, we couldn't agree with you more i mean it's yeah. i see it we, we we see it all the time our stages are always good um just because i think a lot of cosmetologists specifically are looking for men's education that they can understand but our booth um every show that we do we have a little stage and we do our booth like a barber shop so they kind of basically take walk-ins we do haircuts we do beer trims all day but those are the ones um that are really effective because they can come in close and ask questions and they're not separated like these people on a stage rock star-esque vibe. They're normal people, just like all of these hairstylists and barbers. And I think our audience enjoys those intimate classes more than his stage. Right. For sure. Yeah, because you can connect with them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's real life stuff you know like this guy's got a cowlick and this is what i'm going to do to fix right. it it's not just some gorgeous chiseled man on stage with perfect Stop hair looking at me when you say that it gets <laughs> me uncomfortable making me warm no but <laughs> i mean we we sometimes try to pick we don't just pick super handsome guys we pick guys that now you're really looking things. at me vanessa <laughs> <laughs> You know, we want to teach things. So if he's a little bit receding or, you know, something's a little weird in the back, Maddie actually enjoys those type of models because it makes for better teaching moments because this is way more realistic than a hot GQ model dude on a stage. Yeah, completely. It's relatable. Yeah, 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 for sure. That's crazy. Um, Oh, crap. I lost my train of thought. Tony, what was I going to say? You were going to say, yeah, (laughs) that. So... So when people, so when you're looking for models, you, I mean, you just go out and pick somebody, bring them up on stage. Do you already have them already lined up? Do for you? stage and class, they're lined up, um, always. But we just post that we're looking for models, and then we pick average dudes. I don't think we've ever paid for a model, like hired a professional model. Maybe once. I think we did once for a BTC show. We we hired a couple models from there, but we just used regular guys. We yeah. let them send in pictures, and then I'll send him a picture. Do you like this? He says yes or no, and then we just book them. Do they normally have beards as well, or just? It's not a. It's not a, like a prerequisite. They don't yeah. have to, but 
he likes to because he can kind of do multiple classes inside one class. He can do a full haircut and styling class, and then he can do a full beard class as well, which he could take a half an hour doing that. So we, we tend to pick a lot of guys with beards, but it's not necessary. Gotcha. Hey, um, before we were talking about, like, shows and stuff, what would, like, like if you could, what are you looking for? Like, Vanessa the person. What would you look for? Like, like as a customer? Just as, as, like, if you were to design a show, what would it look like? Or, or, or where, would, where would you put the emphasis? Or, or, yeah, let's go with that. You know, uh, we did some community barber showcase events in 2019, I think. And they were very intimate. Not small, but um, the artist were mixed in with the attendees um, and we really like community style events um, I would love to see more things like that um, bringing together of barbers from different companies and doing things like that because things are kind of you know a little bit segregated in the sense where you don't see people mixing because this is like not the corporate model type of thing, but in reality, we're really close friends with people from Babylon, people from Wall, you know, like all, we're all this traveling circus, you know, that goes around the country and meets in these basements. And I think corporate lifestyle, you know, they don't want them mixing, but I think every company kind of is bringing something different to the table. You know what I mean? Like Sophie's phenomenal at fading. Maddie's great at classic haircuts. Mari's a fantastic scissor with scissors. And I think if we could do events where the companies molded together and brought something together for barbering as a community aspect, I would love to see more of that. Um, but you never know. With, you know. I mean, that's, that's, that's the line we've been trying to walk yeah. Yeah. forever. You know, it's to that is that we, again we need the brands you yeah. know but like you said when you come to the show it's like we're all just hanging out it yeah. doesn't really matter you know uh, uh, who's who's standing you know yeah. next to you necessarily you know and that that's really cool um, again I think I think the competition is within the brands not the barbers I guess is what I'm trying to 100%. say 100 percent it's with you know it's, the it's, business people you know not, not the barbers not, it's the, the, the bosses yeah but it's so funny because it kind of emulates life right because it's like, oh, this is my block versus your block, or this is my school versus yeah. your school. And, and, but, you know, instead of us just being a community. A hundred percent. Yeah. We're so community-based, and we've never been like, we can't talk to this person or this person. All of us help each other behind the scenes. All of us are friendly with each other behind the scenes and talk about shows and what we would like to see different, and I would just love to see some brands come together. It's not a competition. It's like... There's a hundred different types of pizza, you know, like there's hundreds of product lines and everyone is bringing something different, but we've never looked at other brands as competition. We've always just focused on ourselves and what we're doing in our mission. And we're always so happy to see our friends succeed. So like if you're looking at corporate business model, you shouldn't be stoked for, for your number yeah. one competition, but we truly are because we're friends behind the scenes. Right. So I guess that's where maybe we're not great, you know, but <laughs> we just love the community aspect and I would love to see more of that. Cause like yeah. at, a, at a show like BTC, Maddie does a collab and he's on stage with someone from Wall, someone from Babliss. Like it's a bunch of different men's brands on one stage and it's really cool to see that dynamic because they're all bringing a different type of education together so I'd that like was to you know during that. COVID when the shows were like I'll just say light I think is the best way to put it you know when there wasn't a lot of brands supporting yeah. each other I loved it because of what you said you know we saw Maddie on stage with Sam V and yeah. we saw Sam V on stage with Benson and we saw yeah. you know it was like all these like competing brands but because the brands weren't represented it was just hairstylists on stage yes. representing the industry and not representing a brand and I thought it was beautiful and magical like if you miss those shows you miss those shows because they were awesome and I know for I'm trying to I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna call this person out but I know someone who got in trouble with the brands because that person was representing that person and not the brand that wasn't there yeah. If that makes sense, right? Right. Yeah, totally. You know, so yeah. it, it was like, it was, but as an attendee, it was it was magical. You're like, oh my gosh, that's, you know, this is the only time you're ever going to see that. You know? And if you look at these artists, Maddie, Symbia, Sophie, and I'm just keep saying these, you know, these sure. big heavy hitters, 
above everything, above a brand name, they are educators and they are here because they want to share knowledge. It doesn't have anything to do with a dollar amount, right? So Maddie is a genius and he is so talented in so many ways, but at the core of who he is as a person is he's an educator. He's not up here for fame. He's definitely not up here for money. He's up here because he likes to share his gift and Mm -hmm. all of these ones at the top, that's why they are there. And that's why they all connect in the way that they do. So if you take away all the brand names behind us, we are all the same. And we all want the same thing for the industry. So Yeah, and and that's what when we, part of our branding is when uh, you see the word community in our branding, you'll see unity in that word lit up. You know what I mean? 100%. And that, because we're 100% behind that. Yeah. You're you're spot on about something. It's like the ones that are like fighting to be influencers, they kind of get, they get lost really quickly. But the ones that are dedicated to be educators are kind of here. And like, if you uh, if you ever want to offend our friend Presley, call her an influencer. <laughs> I just saw her last week. I saw her. Yeah, she fixed my makeup for me at San Antonio. She's like, "Come here, honey." He was like fixing my Bro. therapy eyeliner. She's <laughs> the best. She's the best. I've I've known her since year one, um, and we talk about this as an internal team all the time. There's educators and there's influencers and everybody says these days that they want to be an educator but they don't they want to be an influencer they want a lot of followers they want you know money they want stages and stuff but they don't really want to teach anyone because there's a lot of people in our industry as a whole that have these massive followings and it's kind of like for what like they're not really teaching anything it's you know we kind of came into this era in barbering where They all thought they were like a rap star or something like, you know, like this is some years ago now, but everybody was kind of trying to have this persona of who they were, this rock star vibe and flashy. But if you look at the core of barbering, it's completely opposite from that. Like we're a job of service to to people. And Mm. I, I think there's a huge difference between someone who wants to be an educator and teach and someone who wants to be like a, a famous influencer. And there's not a lot of educators. There's a lot of people that want the other. Yeah, fair that's enough. That's spot on. Yeah, yeah. That's that that def- that definitely is. Well, because if you want to be an educator, you're going to start educating in your salon. So like yeah. we get questions like how do I how do I become a stage artist and his answer is always start teaching in your own salon. Well, literally our friend Mari, she posted about this last week. Yeah. You know, she was it's like true. if you want to be an educator, educate in your chair. Yep. Your you client. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I saw that yeah, post. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's right. It's true. I don't stalk her or anything. Yeah. <laughs> Educating is not a glamorous lifestyle. You know, like I think they're fooled by this Instagram image, this highlight reel of everyone's life. And my own personal friends, they're like, oh, my God, you have so much fun. Like, look at all these parties and stuff. Like, was it great? And I'm like, I'm dead. I'm exhausted. I ate like a cold hot dog on the floor of a convention <laughs> center and I slept like four hours because we work all day. You know, we got here at 730 this morning. Then we have to network at night and it's not parties, but I always say if it looks like I'm having fun, then I did my job because yeah, fair enough. it's a, it's a really hard lifestyle. It's not for everybody. And that's why I think Although, you come see on, so Vanessa, many That's a little off. bit of the violin here. Come on. <laughs> it's true though. You know, that's yeah. why you... We're not, you know, there's these heavy hitters that have been in the circuit and they've maintained and stayed in the circuit and it's because it's discipline and it's hard. And you see other educators, you know, they're huge one year and then they're gone the next or, you know, they're building this following and then all of a sudden they're not doing hair anymore. So it's, this is not an easy lifestyle for anyone. That's, that's a major stretch of the imagination. It's like, and and I'm going to, and you know, opposite of what you're saying is I have a lot of fun at the shows. Oh, absolutely. But the the problem is like, and this is definitely going to sound like the world's smallest violin, (laughs) the travel. Yeah. It's brutal. Yeah. You know, people just don't get that. And like at the mm. end of the show, I kind of want to blink like Genie and be home. <laughs> you know, yeah. not, not wait for two layovers and all that. You're like, oh. I get home and I turn my phone off for two days. I'm like, don't talk to me. Like I need to decompress from it. But it's physical work too. We're walking miles and building booths and running here and there. It's it's not easy. Yeah, we, we ran into you guys last night and you were literally creating props and, and I mean it's yeah. it's a lot of work it's a lot it's of work it doesn't stop you know yeah. it's not uh, for the light hearted but we yeah. love it and we've been doing it for a while I think we're finally getting better at it we might be getting the hang of it by now might be getting the hang of it <laughs> yeah for <Maybe>. sure <laughs> yeah a lot of people th- probably think they just show up 
everything's done. They get on stage, hey, and then walk off stage and then go home and, and, and you know, they did their job. But that's not the case at all. No. Mm-hmm. For some artists, you know, like coming in, they're not, you know, the big stars. They're not building the booth and stuff. But Maddie is building our booth with us and breaking shit down and packing a pallet. And he's completely hands on with every you know what, aspect was, of our business in 2018 when we did premiere and we were there on what's it called build out day or something whatever yeah. the build out day was and and you know i walk up and like i was like wait that's medica does he really have a drill in his hand you know yeah. i was like and you know kids again there's this illusion that that um that that people aren't working but but that it's that way for everyone like everybody that we know within the brands are back there you know building yeah the structures there. that's the magic know? of hair shows right like these people have no idea that he was Staining shit in our booth last <laughs> night, you know, right. like Literally. they think he's this Matty Conrad GQ guy, but he works so incredibly hard at this. Yeah. He works with our chemist on every single product, and then we test it in our barber shop for six months before it ever goes to market with our own barbers because we want to make sure it's going to do what it's going to do. He's designed every piece of our marketing. I mean, he's one hundred percent hands on in every aspect of our business and I just respect him so much for it because it's so hard. Well we're he's a very so spot on team. too though. I mean like he like Yeah. We were talking earlier, I couldn't imagine like being in Maddie's head because he's so specific. Like everything every every bit of the branding, every font, everything screams, you know, his brand and, and who he is and all that. And 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 by the way, couldn't be the nicest guy ever. You know, I mean just he's just That's am- it. he's amazing. You That's know? it. He's amazing. And, he's, um, he's been able to maintain himself and who he is through all of this, and that's why I'm still here, because ego has never come into play. He's never been too good to do something. If we're in the trenches, he's in it with me, you know, type of thing. And I think that's why the partnership has worked so well, because he's not a diva, right? He's mm-hmm. completely involved in all of it. That's, that's why it works another well. Another cool thing that he's able to do is that he surrounds himself with like-minded people. Like all you guys seem very similar in that kind of nature. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like just humble, sweet, get the job done. Just, you know, it, uh, yeah, just hats off to all you guys. Thank you. I mean, I'm a firm believer in like attracts like, and we've had the opportunity to work with so many amazing people. Um, but we have definitely found our groove and what works for us and who conducts themselves the way that we conduct ourselves. I mean, we're, we're very specific on who is with our team, who's carrying our name and things like that because um, we want to maintain integrity, um, not even just in education, just as people. Mm. Um, so I think like attracts like, but we've been very fortunate to have the the work team family that we've had that's cool yeah well thank you i mean I, on a personal level thank you for adopting me at premiere last I've year i've got so many kids i've got kids all over the place right it's kind of fun yeah. though you know every cool. every city we go to because this is our sixth trip around the, the world basically mm-hmm. you see people that you know and you know we have all these relationships like you were saying about tyler you know tyler's like one of my kids like i picked him up from the airport in california made sure he got to naha we just all really take care of each other and help each other out and that's why i think i wanted to continue to do this because of the people involved in all it i mean you know we were talking about the shows and stuff and like i would i would absolutely be sad if it kind of like ended or was less because i mean when do i I never see you right we only like it's kind of like at the shows and stuff and like there's definitely like a handful of people that i seek out like who do i really you know who do i want to see this weekend and and, or who's here that i want to see kind of thing so it feels like summer camp right you know we first day of school we fly into some weird city and see all your buddies for a weekend and then we all go back to our normal lives lives. yeah it's the best though (laughs) carnies like we say it all the time we're like we're the traveling circus we're a bunch of weird carnies or (laughs) i was explaining to my boyfriend what I do and it's we're kind of like a traveling band it's very similar to that lifestyle we're like roadies <laughs> right. that's that, that's probably the most accurate I've heard right yeah yeah and it's like a big you know three ring circus we all completely you know you're building it and you're putting it up and, yeah. Yeah. and then you get a couple clowns and then yeah. you know everything but it's almost like a mirage too you what know do you mean? like it's this thing just pops up like in the middle of nowhere and then literally in 24 hours it's gone it's yeah. so fast and it's magic it really is but i i did a post about this after btc and 
I'm on the backside of things, right? So I know the foreman. Like, I know the Catherine Frank guy who's bringing in all of our booths and things like that. And at these shows, these educators are doing hard work. You know, they're getting up there and they're putting out their energy and they're giving their gift to others. But I think the people behind the scenes are kind of left behind. And it's the guy who's doing the lights and the guy who's making sure the mics work and the guys who are rolling our carpet and those are the people that these things would not even exist if it wasn't for them and I just feel like they get so little credit so I just want to give a shout out to the back end of all of these hair shows these people work so hard and they're so kind and we couldn't be here without them for sure a hundred percent yeah you know yeah what what I'm always blown away by when you start. Actually, I don't even want to go here. I don't know where we're going. What? I don't know where. what? You're scaring me. No, no, it's not a scare. <laughs> like, 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 because I don't want to. I don't want to start anything that I don't really know about. You know, but just, like, just about what you were Ask talking questions. about. And just like the asking questions is a sign you? of intelligence, Corey. <laughs> well, then I'm smart because I, I I only have questions and no answers. <laughs> um, just like like I like the rumor was that the reason that the Philly premiere show ended was because of the union the, the amount that the unions were charging and that was a big part of because they were charging a lot getting in a lot leaving i don't know anything about that like i haven't had any conversations about that at all did they just stop doing it yeah they, premier just stopped just so one like, year right two they did two, two years, two years. Right? i'm more inclined to think that it's an attendance and a money thing versus the well, people that, that won't put the show up. I, right, I right. think it's probably a, a numbers thing, but they might just blame it on something else. But even know? if it's not that, but that could be it, right? If the attendance isn't that. there and it's costing you a lot of money to oh, come yeah. in, like w- there has to be like an RRI. There has to be like a, yeah. you know, a, a, some kind of return on it. And well, if you're yeah. not getting any return on it. Of course, they're going to nix it, right? Like, right. like I don't know how the Ohio show does well because sales-wise, but there's no hair shows there. So... A lot of people go to the show, but they might not shop so much. But so from a brand perspective, a brand is not going to want to come back to a show if they like went home way in the negative. Right. Mm -hmm. So the big shows have to think about, are we going to be able to fill these booth spaces to have a show here? John Mosley. There's a man, John Mosley. There's a guy right there. That's right. That's a, that's a nice drive by, isn't it? Yep. That's <laughs> awesome. Speaking about a non-brand guy, I mean, they're, 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 yeah, you know, like he is his own brand. I mean, dude, that guy. He's larger than life, yeah. and so <laughs> kind, and so kind though, and uh, nice. Yeah, the kindest, genuine. Yep, that's awesome. Yeah. Hey Vanessa, if people want to find you, follow you, get in touch with you, hire you when you know, like Maddie fires you or something <laughs> like. like wow. Well, maybe I'll hair be running your podcast next. No, just <laughs> yeah, that's uh, what she'll she'll have a hair to street uh, <laughs> email address. No. <laughs> <laughs> Vanessa, you at can hair reach to me at yeah. Vanessa Hair to Street. Got <laughs> no, uh, you can find me at Ness News um, on Instagram, but I'm on the back end of the Victory page. So if you're DMing us. It's likely me responding to that. Yeah, and and yeah. definitely if uh, if you see Vanessa, stop by and give her a hug because she loves her so much. I do. Um, at the booth, show uh, I do. She'll be the girl that's not wearing the giant hat. That would be Mari, that's but Mari. she's the other girl. I'm the tiny one. The, the tiny one. She's the I tiny but mighty, right? right that's <laughs> it, right? It's true. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm only five one, but <laughs> you see pictures of me with the team. I look like a child. I'm so small. <laughs> Mighty Mouse. Mm-hmm. Mighty Mouse. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Love it. Thank awesome. you so much for having me, though, today. Uh, I really Vanessa, enjoyed absolutely, it. Absolutely, yeah. dude. Thank you. Thank you for the friendship. And like I said, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for adopting me at Premiere. Yep. Uh, it was We're such a family. Cool, it was such a cool hang, you yeah. know? And it was like a it was a nothing hang, but an everything hang. Yeah. You know, there was no... It's those nothing. moments at the shows where we're, like, sitting by a pool, just having conversations about things that are my favorite part about all of this. And yeah. you're a part of that. Thank you, man. Yeah, I appreciate part of the that. family. Thank you, Vanessa. You Ms. too. Miss Vanessa, thank you very, very much for joining us on you. your day off. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends. Give us a rating and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hairdistry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.